Welcome CSE 121, Programming 1 for Fall 2020. I'm going to give you a little tour of Replit. It's an online IDE that we're going to use pretty much for the rest of the semester. And it's a lot like Python anywhere. You're going to see a console here on the right side. You're going to have a coding area with your numbered coding lines. You're going to have a run button. You can share it. There's our username. There's our name of a Replit. If I run it, I could just go here and hit the run button and there's your output showing up in a console. Now this is just vanilla Python right now. So this is just outputting Python, no turtles, no TK enter, no GUI, anything like that. So this is pretty much what we were doing in Python anywhere. So there's not much difference to that. You might see a little difference in code coloring. Right now the strings are showing up in red and the integers are showing up in green and things like that. And some of the Python terms are showing up in blue. Instead of green, comments are showing up in gray. So they kind of sit back a little bit. So that shouldn't really be a problem when you work with this. There's a little pane over here called files. Now you're not going to make a Python file. It's going to automatically have a default file called main.py. And it doesn't mean you can't put more files in here, but it's only going to run the main.py file. And if you have to make other files, other Python files, you have to import them in as modules. Although you can put other files here like text files and CSV files. We're going to do comma separated value files and things like that in here but you don't really have to mess with this too much although it is very versatile you could download from here you could upload files from here or you could just kind of close this up so you don't see it right now because we're not doing anything with it now the file that you work with in replit is called a repl we'll just call it a repel i call it a repel i'm not sure if it's a repl or whatever but i use the term repel and if you click on it you could see you could give it a name you could change the name here you could even put a description which you don't have to do and you'll even see this term fork which means you can basically fork it so if I send you a URL you can fork it and it could go into your account just like we can do with Gravid sometimes we work with some other pieces of software where you can basically pull files into your account when you work on it so that's what forking is and you don't have to put a .py this is not a Python file this is just your online repel we'll call it that this is your repel and we'll try to use the same naming scheme that we've been using I might even have you put your initials after the file name or put like an underscore in your initials because when I fork it they all come in with the same name and sometimes it's hard to remember whose file it was so if you have your initial on it it's a little bit easier when it comes in so that's the repel name. This is my username up here. And I'm going to go through the whole process of setting up an account because I deleted one of my other accounts. So I'm going to start up one from scratch just to see if I run into any problems and just so you can follow that process. Now, before I do that, let me just go over this stuff over here. Again, this is the files, which you can open and close. There's version control, which we don't have to worry about right now. Packages, which we don't have to worry about. We don't have to worry about the debugger right now. We're not going to be using that right away. There's even a database section, which is new. It's not my SQL, but they do have the ability to work with databases in here. And the settings button down here is the one that you're going to be concerned with. If you go in here, you'll see that they have layout side by side, which is what we're doing right now. And I probably use that the most. You could change that to stacked. Now in Python Anywhere, we only had stacked. But here we have the option to do side by side, which I wish we had in Python anywhere. Now also another thing that we didn't really have other than well, kind of a hacked way to do it in Python anywhere was changing the theme. If you like working in a dark theme, then have at it. You could work in a dark theme. I'm going to stay in the light theme. I like, I like the idea of having lighter background on the code and then having the dark console over here. Now you might think it might record better or look better on screen if I worked in this I don't know you know let me know maybe I'll do one like this and if it looks better I'll record my videos like this but I usually when I'm teaching I usually keep it in the light theme so I'll leave it on light theme right now and font size you could change your font size they have a couple options here between tiny normal large and huge I usually make it bigger so it's easy to see on video when I'm in the classroom and I'm displaying code on a projector in front of the room usually I'll make it bigger because it's hard to see sometimes but whatever is comfortable for you, you could change the font size. As far as tabs, meaning the indent type, they're talking about indent type here. Here's the indents in this code here that you could see. And the lines are kind of indicating that. I recommend using tab. So you could just tab over when we indent something. They'll still indent when you hit return after like a colon or something. When you have an if header or if you have a function header or a loop header, anything like that, it'll automatically indent. But if you want to indent them, I recommend you use the tab key to do that. And I recommend that you keep it kind of on a large size, which is four spaces. I like it kind of more pronounced like that. Again, it's up to you, but that's what I would recommend. 
keybinds. We don't have anything to worry about with keybinds. And wrapping, I would just double check that it says soft wrap here. That means if you bring this window over, it'll wrap your code for you. Now, sometimes it's difficult if you ever try to put a soft break in here, it may mess up your code, but if you have it on soft wrap, it'll kind of wrap your code for you if you need more room. And again, once you close this up, you'll have more room anyway. And then down here, make sure that code intelligence is enabled. If you hover over this, it basically gives you autocomplete and helpful information. Sometimes it can be a little annoying, but it'll help you with some of your code when you have problems. You'll see little red wavy lines. Here's one thing here. If I change this, if I change something here, here's something I'll just put, just change a word down here. I'll get a red wavy line. I'll hover over it and it says undefined because I don't have that variable defined. So those kind of things will help you. Well, it'll be easier to highlight things and make them have quotes. So if I highlighted this and I wanted to put quotes on them, I could just highlight and put quotes on. I don't have to put quotes on either side. There's going to be some things that are going to be a little bit easier in terms of coding. And you'll even see some shortcuts and things like that that we'll encounter along the way. So there'll be a lot of nice things about Replit. It's very popular. Matter of fact, I've been using it for a number of years now, but it's becoming very popular in high schools and things like that. They use them for Java. You can use it for Java, C++, C Sharp, like I said, web, all kinds of stuff. So it's very popular now, which means it may slow down occasionally a little bit more. But there's your settings over there. So I'm going to close this up. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to sign out and I'm going to create a new account and just to see if I run into any problems. Now, again, I'd recommend using the same username that you use for Python Anywhere and the same password. The username being the same will be helpful for me because I'll recognize your username and try to use the same password if you can because that way you don't have another password to remember from the one you were using on Python Anywhere. So I'm going to log out of here, which I will go here to log out and then I'm going to sign up for a new account. So I'll record myself doing that and just see how that goes just so I could show you some of these folders and things like that from the start. So when you come to Replit, even though you can start coding without having an account, I'm going to go here to sign up and I'm going to make a new username and see so it won't let our home because I guess there's one that exists. So I'm going to put I'm going to put RM home up and I'm going to use the same password that I use for all my Replit accounts. So I'm going to hit sign up and I'm not going to put I'm a teacher because I'm actually signing this account up as if I'm a student. All right, so it's going to I'm going to go verify my email. You could do that right now if you want or I could get started. I don't think I have to verify it right this second. But I will have to verify it. Now that I'm in here, now when you get in here for the first time, like I said, after you get your email set up, you're not going to have any repels. You're going to come here to home and you'll see all this kind of stuff here. You can create a repel. Sometimes it'll show popular repels. You can just hit the new repel button. You can put a picture of yourself in here if, if you want when it's in here. It still has my picture. I wonder if it's recognizing me from last time. Let me go to my repels. And no, it's seeing as a new person here. So I don't have anything in here yet. So it says new folder. It has new repel, things like that. So I'm going to make a new folder right away and I'll just call it CSE 121. So I'll just keep it like that since that's my student folder. So I'm going to hit create and I'm going to try to put all my files in there when I work and I'll start the first one. I'll start the first assignment that we're going to work on and then for the next video will actually be the, the assignment but I'll start that one that we're going to be working on next. So I'm going to go up to I could go in here and do a new repel that way it'll go in that folder. So you could do this button or you could do this button and this one you can see all these options. You have tons of options here. I'm just going to select regular Python and it gives you a generic name here and you could change that right away and the first exercise we're going to work on is going to be called 10 because that's our next exercise number I believe and I'm going to call it dice game and you could just make it all one word and I'm just going to put RMH I'm just going to put initials here and if you want to put initials there that might help me otherwise everybody will have the same file when I fork it in so at least that way I might recognize your initial not that I won't see your username but at least that helps a little bit differentiate it and I'll hit create repel and I'm all ready to go here and again you don't have to keep this open although you will want to check your settings so let's see what the default settings are side by side which I'll use light theme font size normal that's fine indent I like to use tabs so I'm gonna change that to tabs and I'm gonna change it to four because I want a more pronounced indent when I work so I am gonna change that and code intelligence is enabled and soft wrap is enabled so that's all I have to do so the only thing I really had to change here unless you want to change the theme to a dark theme is change indent type to tabs and indent size to four. I'd recommend that. And then I could pretty much close this up 
And if you, you know, you looked at this or like, oh, I spelled that wrong or I put my wrong initial or something like that, you can go in here and change this. You could put a description, but you don't have to put a description in it. I'm not going to be looking at your description. So if I was like, ah, I don't need my middle initial in here, I'm just going to call it RH, that's fine. I can do that. I just hit enter and it'll update like that. And here's how we run our files. We don't have anything in here first, so we're gonna start some files here. So we're gonna start a dice game and we're gonna do that in the next video. So I'll just make a video for that particular exercise. But that's all you need to do to get started. For the most part, we're good. One thing I will show you, well, I'll show you how to share it when we're done, but let me just point this out, that when you go to share it, it's basically this. Let me see something here. It looks like it doesn't like, doesn't like underscores. Actually, let me do, try this a second. Okay, it doesn't like underscores uh, as far as this goes because I guess, I don't know why, but it doesn't like it because this is typically what's going to show up when you share it. Let me actually refresh it and see if it updates it. It does. It didn't seem to like the underscore, so that's fine. But when you go to share this, so I guess we'll just use dashes when we do this. If you put any kind of breaks in here, we'll just use dashes. But when you go to share this, you could go over here and go to share, and they have this stuff here like you know, copy and all this, just ignore all this. Don't invite someone, join, ignore all this. You're just gonna go down here where it says copy repel link. That's all you're gonna do. And you're just gonna copy and it won't even do anything. Now, all that it's copying is this. It's copying that. So if you didn't even wanna share it that way, you could always just go here and do control C and paste it. When we put it into our assignment, we can paste it like that because that's the URL. And then when it comes to me, I'll see your username. I'll see, oh, that's your username. And then even if I can't get into that file, I can click on your username and I can see all your folders in there. I can see your files. I can see your folders. I can get in there. The thing is, I don't work in your account. When I see your files, I have to copy them to my account. That's what forking is. So I just copy them to my account. And then I have my own file that I'm working on, which is a copy of yours. And that's probably better anyway. Because a couple times in Python anywhere, I made some changes and then it saved it. And I didn't, I didn't really want to save it. So I had to save as different names and stuff like that. So anyway, I'll go over more of that and we'll get more familiar with Replit as we work on our next exercise, which is going to be exercise 10, Dice Game.